Hello, Dr. Alfred Richardson. My name is Alman Gabriel Devot. And I am Serge Mbabazi. We are trainers at Ruenja Tibet School. Good that you join us in the second edition about roof construction. Last time we have seen how the roof has been planned and the pieces have been prepared. Now, let's continue. Hello everyone, my name is Sepi Munya Hilpe and I'm a carpentry trainer at Ruenja Tibet School. Today we are going to have a lesson about how to assemble the roof frame. The objective actually is that later you will be able to mark and produce the drawings. Besides this, we have another objective that later you will be able to assemble the roof frame. By then you will have this roof assembled, so what I can request you is that you can follow well and take notes where it is necessary so that you will not have more challenges about how to produce the roof. So let's get started. Now let us talk about the components of the roof. So the first component that we are having on the roof, it is the wall plate. The wall plate actually, it is giving the fixing point of the roof to the house. So on this roof, the wall plate will be this one and this one. So and of course it is going around the whole house to give the fixing point. Another part we have, it is common raster. The common raster, it is this raster. And actually it is called, called common raster because it comes from the top of the house or let's say the highest point of the house to the wall plate. Another part that we are having or component, it is hip raster. The hip raster, it is this raster we have here. Normally the hip, it is this part we have. And the hip raster, it is the raster that we use here to give this hip. Another part we have, it is king raster. So here on the hip, we will need to use the raster which is in the middle. So then this raster, it is called king raster. It might happen that we need the other rasters between the king raster to the outside of the hip. So this means rasters in this area. So the rasters we use there, like this one, it is called the jack raster. So we also have another part that we call valley raster, and the valley raster, they are those raster we have there. And the valley rasters actually are used to give the valley, which is there between two internal slopes of the roof. Finally, we have the parallels. The parallels are these pieces we fix on the roof to give the fixing point of the covering material. So most of the time when we use sheets like the iron sheet, then we need the parallels. So this means on this roof, the parallels are, for example, this piece and this piece we have here, because later we need them to fix the sheet on the roof. So now what we are going to do is the marking of the drawings. So marking of the drawings is actually coming after having the materials prepared. So we will mark the different drawings, so especially the connections between, for example, the bottom cord and the raster, connection between the rasters, bottom cord and the, the king post, the connection between uh, the other members of the rasters to the webs, so the things like this. But we will also have to cut, for example, or to mark the bed mark. So it has a connection between the wall plate and, and the truss or in the rafters. So before we start, we need to prepare the press. Of course, the press is already prepared. So we need a clean press and a big press where we can lay our pieces easily. And then working it easier. So we can use the workbenches, but if you have tracers, they can also be used. Besides this, we need the tools. So the tools we need actually, uh, we need body ruler, we need pencil, we need meter square, we need bevel, sliding bevel. And depending on the tools you have, uh, these two tools can also help. Set square and protractor, because now we are dealing with the angles so that later our truss can fit easily. So we will start on the 
bottom code. So actually, remember that we calculated 60 degrees. We have to cut here because here we have the 30 degrees. Then it's the opposite of the angle. So what you do is to set your bevel. So for me, I already set it. Actually, you have to use the protractor to set that. So then after, you have to match the, the angle there. And then with my folding ruler, I have to check where the next line will be. So it is in 125 centimeters. And then we put another line. So they should not be parallel. That's very important. The rafters will be like this. So then what we do, we are going to take the rafters and then we measure uh, 30, 30 degrees on both rafters. So that later, if you cut this angle and then you cut this one, the rafters can be able to meet. So then what we do, we have to, to measure the length of the rafter. So, but then something important for the rafters, so on the bottom code, the angles were not parallel. So now on the rafter, we make the angles parallel. So that's very important. So this was the angle we measured on top. So to make sure that I do not do any mistake, I can slide my bevel. So to where I measured before, 92.5. Then I can mark it. So then the next thing we do is to, make, to mark the bed mark. So if the bed mark, because we need the if of 10 centimeters of 100 millimeters, so we, according to what, the, to what uh, we calculated before, so we have to mark in 11.5, because this is inclined, so it has to be increased. It's not exactly 100 uh, millimeters. Because the whole plate is 50 millimeters, so we can measure 50 millimeters like this. And then we check where 50 millimeters will be. And then we can mark it. So this will be out. So we have to cut here. And then we cut here. So like this, the rafter is done. So now the next thing that we need to have our truss complete is that we, we, we need the king post, so which will be here in the middle, and we need the waves, so which will be more or less like this. I know that my king post is 320 millimeters. I mark another line there, so I need the middle for one. And then after, with my bevel adjusted in the 30 degrees, I will set my bevel to that middle point. So I make this line, I mark another line. So then this means that actually, uh, we we'll cut here, and then we cut this line, and then we cut in this line, and then it can fit between the rafter. The webs, they will fit like this. So what we need is this angle and this angle. So I will mark this web so that you can see how it is. So then after measuring so, uh, the length of the web, there we need 45 degrees. So in 45 degrees, now it's the time to use the meter square and 
We make sure that it is up there to that to that point we measured. This is a king post thrust. But if you are going to use a rafter, not a truss, so you will measure the rafter as we measured this one, so there is no difference. But in case you have the queen post truss, if you have the queen post truss now, so it is also very easy. I can quickly show it to you. So now let us say that this is the bottom code, the rafters for the Aquinipot truss. So we need to measure the length. So then we have this length with the queen pot. Then the angle actually we follow with the queen pot, it's uh, this angle we marked here. So it was 30 degrees, but to easily measure that, I can adjust my bevel once again on that angle. So in the end, uh, the first queen pot is marked. You know that with the queen pot, we have another piece there. For me, I would advise you not to cut this piece in the beginning. Uh, we just cut all of the other pieces which I can, it is pretty, and then we can cut this one later to make sure that uh, it is fitting in proper way. So this is all about uh, marking the trusses and the rafters. So actually the next step would be to cut them. So now after marking the piece, what we do is cutting the pieces. So that's why we have the frame saw, and actually this is good machine to work with when doing the roofing. So actually what we need for the machine is the PPE, and then besides this, the machine should be placed in good place where it is not disturbed by the other materials, let's say. So to work with the machine, we have the possibilities that we can change the angles. So even this angle can change, can be changed. So then like this we are able to cut the pieces in, in the, the right way and according to the angles that we need. Our roof frame, we need to protect it either from insects or spongy. That's why we can apply the finish or we apply the oil. So, but besides this, in case we need high protection, we can also apply the fungicide or insecticide. Once again, you have learned a lot from this and we hope that it will help you. As usual, you can find this video on e learning website of Rwanda Polytechnic. Soon we will have the last lesson about roof construction. Join us again. Until then, stay safe and goodbye. goodbye.